Hello, everybody, and welcome to I Read Your Comments, and let's read some more comments here. You guys are absolutely awesome for sending in so many comments and questions. So here's one from Alexei Manchin. Now, Alexei Manchin has been uh, sending in quite a few lately, so uh, let's see what we got here. So Alexei says, would be great to actually get an idea how to tackle the question if you don't quite cover all of the requirements or cover a requirement indirectly or not to full extent. Okay, so this is in response to this video right here. Why should we hire you? Now, um, I have advocated that when they ask you this question in a job interview, why should we hire you? Okay, you tell them how you meet all the requirements that they posted in the uh, job description. Okay, so in a job posting, they will describe the job and they will give a list of requirements. This is what we're looking for. Now, what you do is you basically go down that list and you speak to each one. Now, Alexei is saying, well, look, if you actually don't meet one of those, what do you say? And that's a great question. Now, here's what's going on. Okay, first of all, first of all, with the assumption that a recruiter has actually read your job application, okay, the assumption is that since they have called you in for an interview, That signals that they feel, based on your resume, you are qualified for the job. The things you wrote down on your resume, that tends to indicate that you are qualified. What they want to do now is they want to get to know who you are to see if you have personal issues. Like, you could not really want that job. You could kind of not enjoy that type of work. You maybe wish you were elsewhere. Things like this. These are the types of issues they're trying to probe for. Okay, so the fact that you're even there shows that none of the requirements are a deal breaker for you in their mind. Okay, so remember that. Now, that being said, you don't want to totally trip up on a question like this and say something like, you know what, I'm totally not qualified. I haven't done that ever. And uh, that's going to be a real big problem for me. If you were to say something like that, now you're changing their mind to for them to think that you are not qualified. Okay, so you don't want to do that. So the secret is to be able to speak to the requirements, okay? Now, what I mean by that is that, first of all, if you meet the requirement, you say you meet it, you say how, and then you move on. That's pretty obvious. If you don't quite meet it, let's say they're looking for five years experience in a certain role, and you only have two years experience in that role, okay? That would be an example of you don't quite meet the requirement, okay? But as you're addressing that, you don't say, oh, I don't meet the requirement. I only have two years. I don't have five years. Sorry. When you say this, they get the impression that, oh, okay, you, you, you're not qualified. This is where you have to learn to phrase things in a positive way. Okay. So first of all, you say you have two years experience directly in that role. Then What you can try and do, an obvious thing to try and do, is to think of what other experience you have over the course of your life and see if any of that experience relates directly to the experience they want you to have. So, for example, let's say they're looking for somebody with five years customer service experience. Now, maybe you only have two years, okay? But... Maybe in a previous job, you dealt with customers indirectly, or maybe you had done some volunteer work at some point where you were dealing essentially with customers. I mean, they don't pay, so they're not technically customers, but they're essentially people that you're serving. Your job was to work directly with the people that you're serving, and all the things you had to do was in line with dealing with customers. Maybe you did work when you were back in school, maybe back in university or college or trade school or high school or whatever you have. You maybe did a project, you maybe did extracurricular activities, you know, whatever. Um, Maybe you dealt with internal customers at a previous job. You weren't dealing with the general public, but you were serving, you worked in, I don't know, you worked in uh, a part of the company where you had to dispense materials to another part of the company or you worked in the warehouse you know you're not dealing with external customers you're dealing with internal customers so you can present that by saying look i've got two years 
direct customer experience. In addition, I have four years of dealing with internal customers and satisfying their needs, getting their wants, wills, and needs, satisfying them, interacting with them, communicating with them, maintaining positive relationships with them, and uh, putting out fires when they have an issue. So that's directly related to this job. So I know how to do that. And therefore, I meet that requirement. Okay. So if you present that, okay, in the mind of the recruiter or interviewer, they're probably going to conclude that, yes, this person is qualified. That requirement will not be an issue. Okay. So it's all about thinking of what you do have that relates to what they're looking for and presenting that. Okay. Because as I say, they've already made the first impression that you are qualified. All you have to do is not talk yourself out of it. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense to Alexei. That's a great question. I know a lot of people have been thinking that too. Uh, what else we got? Uh, this is from Evan Cruz. One question. How do we address side hustles in a job interview if asked about them? Okay, this was for uh, this video. Job search is torture. Um, okay, side hustles. So if you have a side hustle, my general recommendation is don't mention it. Because the way employers think is that if you're applying for a job and you're saying, look, I, I would make a great employee. But then you say, well, I'm also doing my own thing on the side. Okay, it's making me money. It's what I want to do. It's something that I presumably enjoy more than working as an employee because it's something I created for myself. It's all done on my own terms. And I persist with it. So the way they're going to interpret that is they're going to interpret it in a very negative way. They're going to say, oh, you, you got your own thing going? Okay, okay, no problem. Uh, it looks like that's your thing. And if we were to employ you here, that would be a conflict. Okay. Where do you put your energy? You put it into the side hustle or you put it into our job for you. Uh, you're going to choose the side hustle every time because it's your own creative endeavor. Okay. Uh, so we don't want to compete with you where your, your energy and your loyalty um, and your interest is divided between this job and something you've got going. We're looking for somebody that's 100% loyal to our company. This is their single source of income. Therefore, they care about it a lot. And they are not dividing their energy between this and some other type of activity. Okay? So for that reason, I recommend that uh, you don't mention side hustles in a job interview. Now, I know this is hard. This is hard for some people because if you've done a side hustle or you're currently doing one, you're proud of it, okay? It demonstrates some great abilities. It demonstrates some great qualities and skills you have. And one would think that a part of a job interview is sort of touting your strengths. And this is definitely a strength. So it can be very hard to bite your tongue and not mention it. But still, if you're going to a conventional job interview with a recruiter, I still recommend you don't mention a side hustle because they will perceive that as a negative, okay? Sometimes you can't always do this because maybe you had a work gap uh, and the only way to sort of deflect any concerns over your long work gap is to say like, look, I was doing a side hustle. That's, that's what was actually going on. But if you do mention it under those circumstances, I would then recommend that you then say, it's over, <laughs> right? Uh, whether or not that's true, you kind of have to say that. Otherwise, it's going to be regarded as a big negative for the reasons I just mentioned. Okay. So uh, that's my position on that. Ho hopefully that's helpful. Thanks, Evan, for sending that in. In fact, you guys are great. You know, I've had a lot of very complimentary uh, comments sent in. Here's, here's a couple of them. Um, this is from Master X2Z. See, I say Z because I'm in Canada. If you're American, you uh, may say Z, and that's fine. That's nothing to be embarrassed about. Um, but I say Z. Uh, this is from Master X2Z. says, I just want to come back and say this video and the entire series are amazing. 
I got my first job offer just earlier today as a fresh grad, and I followed you and I followed what you said and practiced, and I got the job. Guys, forget all the other videos you see on YouTube. This guy knows what he's talking about. I got the, the job I got was a junior project engineer at a major engineering firm. I literally graduate next week, and I'm so grateful that I stumbled upon your videos. That's awesome. Thank you so much for taking the trouble to, to tell me that. Um, that makes me feel really good, and I'm very happy for you, Master 2X. That's an amazing achievement. You should be very proud of yourself and very pleased with how well you did. You crushed it, and no one can take that away from you. I wish you a lot of success in your job. And the fact that you came back and tried to make me feel better by saying this, that shows you're a fine, upstanding person. So thank you so much. Thank you to everybody. I also want to thank my members uh, who have also taken the trouble to join my channel to get extra videos. You guys are especially awesome because you come back for more. That's great. And I appreciate every single one of you. Uh, this one is from Neil Brown it says, I just used your videos to help me land a new job. Thank you. Your stuff is common sense gold. Well, thank you very much, Neil. Like I said, way to go. That's wonderful news. Congratulations. You know, it's that feeling of elation when you get a job. A lot of times it's the, it's the analog of how bad you feel when you're rejected for a job. Uh, it's like a vindication for a lot of that. A lot of times, especially when we're young, we need that external uh, vindication to prove to us that we are good. Uh, once we get a little bit older and hopefully we get a little bit more confident, we, we've done enough and we've seen enough and we've had enough wins to sort of feel that we have value. But when we're just starting out, we might not have that yet. So it can feel really good to get a job, especially when we're young. So congratulations. You deserve uh, every good vibe that comes your way because of this. Thank you so much, Neil. And thank you for uh, taking the trouble to let me know that. Uh, and finally, here's one more. This is from Narish Kumar. Narish says, hello, sir. I have watched a few of your videos from the past 15 days, and I have applied the same thing uh, the same thing. Today, I got selected in the company. I really thank you for your efforts and advice to the engineers and advice to the engineers about learning attitudes. You are a great human being. God bless and God bless you. A great health and wealth in your life. Well, thank you so much, Naresh. That's very kind of you to say. Like I said here, wow, thanks and congratulations. I'm so happy that you uh, that you got the job. You know, especially considering you're the type of person that would say this kind of thing to me um, and try and spread that positivity around. That's awesome. Um, yeah, this one, this was the video, no job offers. Why don't you hire me getting interviews, but no job offers what to do. So hopefully that worked out for you. It sounds like it did. Thank you to Naresh and thank you to everyone for saying such positive things. It's what keeps me doing the YouTube thing seeing uh the great reactions from people like you guys and all the people that go a step further like my members and my patreons and all the rest of it you guys are all awesome i do appreciate every single one of you thanks so much for being here and if you have suggestions as always feel free to send those my way i read every single one and uh, i try to accommodate people as much as i possibly can so thank you and i hope you will join me on the next episode of I read your comments. Thanks and take care.